everybody, Russ with rwgresearch.com and quantumgravityresearch.org. More lights above my head, don't look that nice. Anyway, <laughs> so this is magnetic experiments, magnetic, magne magnetizing experiments number three. I've made a jig here, all right? One of these jigs is to hold my magnet this direction, inside there. And one of them is to hold this magnet this way, inside of there, okay? And it fits inside here, you can put the whole thing in there. Oop. Okay, so that that slug fits inside of my 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 magnetizing machine. All right, just like that. So what the goal is is to use different voltages, different power levels, and make sure that the magnet is in the exact same spot and graph out the amount of power versus the um, amount of Gauss Gauss, however you pronounce it. And um, that's my that's my goal. Okay, so I'm going to chart that out really nicely. So time lapse video right now, and basically the results. Enjoy. Wow. Okay, so, uh, where's my magnet? After magnetizing and demagnetizing this magnet, okay, um, after about 22 times, um, one extra because I play, I, try, I did a random experiment during this process, but anyway, this guy um, is actually looking pretty sad. Now, in case you're wondering, I marked this thing, okay, as you can see, I marked it so that I could tell which way it is and I always faced it the same direction. So what I did is I did these tests three times. Okay, I did a total of seven tests three times to get an average to make sure there was no fluke in my test measurements. Let me answer that. It appears they hung up. Anyway, uh, maybe I stand in front of the light, it won't be so bad, but anyway. So that was a lot. Now, I did all this to chart it out and to get an idea of where is the power level problem. So what I mean is, is somewhere in here there's going to be a problem where you basically um, you can't put any more into it. Alright? Um, like hysteresis. There's a particular point where you got to pay attention to that. So, let's look at the data and see what it says. Okay, so there's the data. I think that you can see this well enough. All right, so we have our joules, the amount of energy, the Gauss positive, the Gauss negative. Um, positive is, is north, negative is south. Oh, and then uh, voltage, okay, and our current. All right, so these are our graphical charts. So the Gauss pretty much is uh, you know on top of each other and you can barely even see it. Now the uh, purple here all right, is the amount of joules, the amount of energy that I applied all right, or I had stored in the capacitors that I applied all right, and the current all right, is, uh, is an, 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 equave, uh, an, an equal, I can't say it, an equal, <laughs> an equal uh, chart is this, okay? But look what happens to the Gauss reading. So um, at this point, I was getting about the maximum of what this magnet was when I originally had it. And look at it. It appears that it just flat lines. And it is almost, I, the averages are identical. So what that tells me is if I get to this point, I would need to do a few more tests right around um, probably 1,000 volts to find out where that tipping point's at. And then anything past this is a waste of energy. It helps none. Now I believe that that has to do with the, the neodymium compound itself. The compound is going to actually change how much magnetism it can hold. It's actually what um, grade of neodymium it is, which is your N values. Now I'll need to actually look up what the N values are, but they're probably the type of neodymium, okay, or the purity or something. So. 
that's it. I just wanted to uh, I wanted to make this video because I wanted to get a nice idea of what happens and if you can actually magnetize and unmagnetize a piece of neodymium. Now, fair warning. Let me just show you. I have a bunch of neodymium blanks that are not coated. Okay. Do not heat these. They will just burn up, melt, stink, probably toxic. Um, so don't do that. Chromed anyway. They they seem to do fine. And actually, I have been quenching this. So I've been heating it up and then sticking it up a cup of water and quenching it just to cool it off really fast and then run it under some cool water to get it down to the same temperature so the tests were comparable. Um, interesting that you can quench a magnet like this and it doesn't really seem to affect it a whole lot. Maybe there's some something going on there but not that I not that I could tell. So that's it for this experiment Russ. I'm out. Have a good day. Uh, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Peace.